Hey y'all, welcome to a new week of What's for Dinner. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five simple and delicious dinner ideas. Let's start off with this cheesy ground beef hash brown casserole. This one was a new one for us and I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all it is incredible. So I'm going to start off by cooking up two pounds of some ground beef, just getting it chopped up with my Pampered Chef meat chopper. When that's about halfway cooked through, I like to go in and season it. So I'm going to do some onion powder salt and pepper if you like actual onion dice you up one cook it in with the ground beef and just replace that with the onion powder but once that's fully cooked i'm just going to drain off the grease set the meat to the side to that same skillet i'm heating up about a tablespoon of olive oil and i went ahead and peeled washed and chopped up about two large carrots i'm using this little food chopper i got off of amazon and that made it super quick i'm also going to add in a big spoonful of just some jarred minced garlic another way to save some time even though i do think you know fresh garlic is the best but I am not against jarred garlic. Um, so I'm just gonna saute that for a few minutes until the carrots start to get a little bit tender. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in that cooked and drained ground beef and just incorporate it with the carrots. Next, I'm gonna add in about a cup of chicken broth, which is exactly what I had left in my fridge. And I'm also gonna add in a good amount of some oregano. This is a spice that I have recently discovered that we all really like, and it goes really good with carrots and ground beef. Um, I'm also gonna add in about a cup of sour cream as well as about a cup of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. So I have my stove on about a medium temperature. Everything's kind of simmering and I'm just going to keep on stirring this until that cheese and sour cream is melted. So once it looks something like this, I went ahead and seasoned the sauce as well with a little bit of salt and pepper. I didn't go heavy handed since I did season the meat, but I'm going to transfer that on over to a greased two quart casserole dish. Um, and now we're going to start working on the hash browns. So um, this recipe did call for some fresh potatoes to be peeled, shredded, and then you just drain out the excess water. Um, I was going to do that, but I didn't have enough potatoes. So I just used what I had and I did have a half a bag of some frozen shredded hash browns in my deep freezer that needed used up anyway. So I just thawed that out. Um, I drizzled it with just a little bit of olive oil and seasoned it with some Lari seasoned salt and pepper and I just stirred that all together really good and I am topping that over the ground beef mixture kind of spreading that out my oven is preheated to 375 degrees and I'm going to pop that in for 40 minutes so after that cook time your topping should be crispy I recommend like taste testing a little piece of potato to make sure it's tender since all ovens cook differently but lastly you just top it with another cup of shredded cheese and pop that back in the oven for a final five minutes that should make it nice and bubbly and that cheese should be melted perfectly so here is my serving i decided to serve it with some zucchini that i just diced i sauteed it with some olive oil um, some kinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning and some paprika that turned out super good i tend to forget about zucchini but every time I have it I always ask myself why I don't make it more often but I do plan to incorporate it more this summer but you guys this casserole definitely exceeded my expectations I did not expect for it to be that good um, everyone in the family loved it especially my meat and potato loving husband but even my picky eaters my kids loved it it is definitely a new family favorite and I'm so glad that I decided to give it a try Next up is going to be my definition of the perfect summer meal. So I'm going to start off by showing y'all how I make my potato salad. This is my favorite go-to southern style potato salad. It is one of our favorite summer side dishes and it's honestly just one of my favorite foods in general. It is delicious. In my last video, several of you guys wanted to know how I make it. So here we go. So I use russet potatoes for this. I normally do about about two pounds which is usually like four to five potatoes I peel those wash them and I like to do it over a grocery bag that way it's just super easy to toss out no mess and now I'm gonna go in and slice the potatoes and then I take each slice and just dice it into little bite-sized pieces until they are about that size and once I get all of those diced up I'm going to transfer those on over to a large pot fill that with water and I always stop my water really well just like I would with pasta 
I bring that up to a boil and I let it boil on its own for a few minutes and then I add in some eggs. So I do five eggs for about two pounds of potatoes and once I add those, I set a timer for 13 minutes. Sometimes I cook them separate, but it's really nice to save a dish and do it this way. Um, but after the timer goes off, I just toss those into an ice water bath. Um, and then I drain off the potatoes. So now I'm gonna work on the dressing that's gonna coat everything. So to a large mixing bowl, I'm gonna add some Duke's Mayo. I never measure this, but I would say that's like a heaping cup, maybe even a cup and a half. I do a big squirt of mustard, a little splash of dill pickle juice, and I do a good amount of some dill pickle relish. Sometimes I'll chop my own pickles and add those in. It's really good that way as well, but we like it pretty good either way. So I'm just gonna stir that together really good and. And I have been doing this egg hack for years. You just take a cooling rack, place it over your bowl, lay your egg down, and just take the palm of your hand and kind of smack it down in there. It dices them all perfectly. It's all the same size, and it does it so, so quick. It's an amazing little hack. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and add in my potatoes that I have let cool down first. Letting it cool is key to making the potatoes hold their shape. If you do it while it's hot, it will turn to mashed potatoes, which some people prefer that, but... This is how we do it. I like to add in some salad supreme seasoning and I also do some salt, pepper, and onion powder. I like to go in with a spatula to kind of just fold everything together. I do like when like some of the potatoes get kind of mashed up, but for the most part, I like it to hold its shape. So I'm just gonna keep on folding it until everything looks nice and creamy. And then lastly, I like to hit the top with some paprika, just like I would with some deviled eggs. I feel like it's not potato salad without that paprika. But I'm gonna cover my bowl with some cling wrap. I like to do this in the morning time and I like to let it sit in the fridge all day so that it can get nice and cheap and flavorful by dinner time. So I'm also going to make some homemade baked beans. So I have two cans of pork and beans. Um, the recipe does call for baked beans and you're just kind of dressing them up, but my parents have always done pork and beans. So that's how I do it. So I'm adding in a quarter cup of brown sugar. I season this with some onion powder. I'm doing about a quarter cup of ketchup and then two tablespoons of mustard. Normally I do molasses and I do have some, but it's all crystallized. I didn't want to fool with it. So I'm using some sour gum. Pretty sure that's how you say it. It is basically the same thing. And I'm going to add in two spoonfuls of it. This stuff is very sticky. So it's kind of hard to get off the spoon. I should have sprayed it with some cooking spray. That would have helped, but just wasn't thinking. Um, I'm also adding in a big spoonful of minced garlic, several dashes of Worcestershire sauce, and I also cooked and crumbled some bacon slices. I believe I cooked up like five strips, I'm pretty sure. And I'm just gonna get all of that stirred together really well. And that's going to go in the oven at 350 degrees for one hour. I do come in halfway through the cooking time to give it a good stir, but that is it. Really easy. This is a great baked bean recipe, but it's always hard for me to be completely satisfied because my dad makes the best baked beans. Nothing compares, so I'm going to have to make him come on here and share that recipe. Um, but I'm also going to be making some marinated hot dogs, which is something I have never done before. Um, I always buy the ballpark bun size beef hot dogs. That one is our favorite. I'm adding eight of those to a Ziploc bag. But anyway, so on TikTok, I've been seeing a lot of people starting to season their hot dogs, which is something I would have never thought to do. And it really piqued my interest. So I went to Pinterest and I found this marinade for hot dogs, which had great reviews. So I was really excited about this. So to a bowl, I've added a half a cup of chili sauce. I did a teaspoon each of onion and garlic powder, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, about a tablespoon of mustard and a tablespoon of brown sugar, and then just a little bit of salt and pepper. I stirred that together and I simply just poured that over the hot dogs. I'm gonna um, seal the bag up, make sure all the air is out, and I'm just gonna kind of massage that really well into the hot dogs. And I did do this about an hour before I went to cook them, so that went in the fridge to kind of soak. Um, I was gonna grill this, but it was a rainy day, so I went to the air fryer, which if you've never had air fryer hot dogs, they're so good. I cooked them at 390 degrees. I started at seven minutes, but I ended up doing them an additional five minutes. 
but y'all it was so so good definitely that's going to be my new go-to thing when we have people over for a cookout i most definitely will be doing that again it's really good the potato salad is always good the baked beans were good and i also threw some watermelon on the side we are not a watermelon family um we just don't really like it but you know i hear your taste buds are always changing so we gave it another try still not our favorite but it was all right but seriously doesn't this plate just scream summertime it puts me in the best mood i am just so ready up next i'm gonna make some buttermilk fried chicken i have been craving this for a while now and i figured it was finally time to make it happen so to be honest we prefer like chicken tenders i'm really good at cooking those it's a little bit easier to eat especially for the kids but I've been wanting to challenge myself a little bit more lately. Um, I haven't done bone-in fried chicken that many times in my life. In my deep freezer, I had a pack of chicken legs as well as a pack of chicken thighs. They've been in there a while. I really wanted to get those cooked up. So I just kind of randomly decided to thaw those out, just cook it all up. And it's definitely more than what we need for our family. But I gave some away to my father-in-law um, since he's next door. But anyways, I seasoned the chicken with some garlic salt, pepper, onion powder, and some paprika. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, I flipped that on over, did it to the other side, and I also drizzled on some hot sauce. And then I grabbed my buttermilk. And this isn't necessary, but I did decide to kind of rub in that hot sauce and turn it over. I kind of just want it to be skin side up. It felt important at the time, but it's really not. Um, I'm going to be adding a lot of buttermilk. I want this chicken to be completely covered. And I don't think I mentioned it yet, but I am doing this the night before. I do like my buttermilk to soak in the chicken all night long. I can always tell when chicken has been soaked in buttermilk. It's definitely a great tenderizer. Um, and I always can kind of taste it as well. It's just, it's very necessary for me. But I'm also kind of lifting that up, making sure it's, you know, covering the bottom of the dish. I got that covered. And like I said, that went in the fridge, soaked all night. So here we are the next day. I'm going to grab a box of Kentucky Colonel Seasoned Flour. I don't always use this for fried chicken, but I do really like it. I had it in the pantry and it was really close to the expiration date, which was another reason that I decided to make some fried chicken. But I transferred that on over to a Ziploc bag and I like to add in a couple pieces of chicken at a time and I simply just shake it really good. And I'm just going to go in pull it out and I'm going to place that on a cooling rack that is over a cookie sheet and I'm just going to let this sit here and chill out for a bit while I am bringing my oil up to temperature. I don't like to drop in the chicken when it's like ice cold especially when it's bone in and that's going to also help the flour kind of dry out a bit really adhere to the chicken so once my oil was up to about 350 degrees that's when I went in and dropped my chicken I'm cooking this in some canola oil I normally do vegetable oil but I just use what I had and I always like to do it in a cast iron skillet if I'm not using a deep fryer which I do have a deep fryer I don't use it that often because I just think it takes up so much oil and it's just kind of a pain to clean out it's just a whole thing but anyways so I do find like frying bone and chicken to be a little bit tricky because I don't know just I feel like I was constantly messing with the temperature of the stove because it kept dropping or getting too high and to me anyways I feel like it's a little bit difficult to not burn your crust trying to get the inside done but I did use a meat thermometer to help me um, I think I still did pretty good I did about seven to eight minutes per side on the first batch um, the chicken thighs were definitely bigger so those did take a little bit longer so I was just patient with it Anytime I fry anything, I make such a mess that it's ridiculous. Like, there was oil all over that stove. I completely ruined a whole outfit. I could not get those stains out. And the smell that lingers in my house for, like, a whole day, it just drives me nuts. But I'm not trying to complain, but I'm just telling y'all the truth of what I think about it. But, anywho... I waited for my chicken to get to 165 degrees, and then I knew I was good. I served it with some mashed potatoes and some garlic cheddar biscuits, and I also made some pea salad, which I'm going to quickly show y'all how I made it. So I'm using a can of peas that I drained. I threw that in a small mixing bowl, and I'm going to add in two hard-boiled eggs that I diced up. I have actually never done this before with pea salad, but I know it's like a pretty common thing to do, at least where I live, and... It just looked good, so I decided to try it, and oh my goodness, I will never do it any other way. It goes so good together. I'm also going to add in some mayo. I would say I did about a half a cup, maybe a little bit under, 
And I'm also going to add in a little bit of onion powder and just a little bit of salt and pepper. That is it. I'm using a like soft spatula. That way when I'm stirring everything, it's not going to like mash up those peas. And just like the potato salad, I'm going to cover it with cling wrap. I did this in the morning and I let it set all day. This is seriously so good. If you have never had pea salad before and you like peas, give that a try. It is just delicious. It went so well with this. This fried chicken was good. It was not the best fried chicken I've ever had, but I was pretty proud of it, and it was definitely worth the hassle. On this night, I needed something really quick, so I'm going to be making some ham barbecue sandwiches. I shared this recipe on my channel about a year ago. It was about this time of year last year that I shared it, but maybe you missed it. Maybe you're new. It's definitely worth talking about again. So to a saucepan, I've added a cup of ketchup, three tablespoons of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You can definitely taste the vinegar in this recipe, so if that's not your thing, you may want to cut that back. I also added in about a tablespoon of mustard and just a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. That is it for the barbecue sauce. I moved that on over to my stove, stirred it really good, and I'm just going to let it simmer for a few minutes before I add in a pound of some daily ham. So I sent Josh to go pick this ham up after work. I told him to get shaved ham, but he came back with some thin slices, which it's fine. Not a big deal. I made it work. I just kind of chopped it up as I stirred it, and I just kept on stirring it until all of that ham was perfectly coated in the sauce. And once you get it to the consistency that you like, let it sit there and simmer in the sauce for at least five minutes. Um, just make sure that ham is heated through. But this takes no time at all. It should look like this when it is done. And it is seriously just one of my favorite go-to quick recipes. Like, it's just extremely quick. And it's something different. Like, we just really enjoy it. So, we serve it on some buttered and toasted buns. We've never added anything to it, but I'm sure it would be good with some mayo, maybe some lettuce and pickles, maybe even a tomato. But yeah, to go along with it, I also made the popular three ingredient chili cheese dip, which I've actually never made before or even had. But I know it's right up our alley. I knew we would love it. So to a pie plate, I'm just adding one block of some room temperature cream cheese, and I'm just taking my spatula to spread that out, um, and then I'm just going to kind of smooth it out. But it's definitely key to make sure that your cream cheese is at room temperature. That will make it spread so quickly. Um, definitely set that out in time, make your life easier. So once I got that spread out into a nice even layer, I'm just going to take a can of chili and simply dump that on top. Hormel chili is like our go-to canned chili. When we make chili dogs, we normally go for the no bean one, but for this, we decided to try it with the beans, but I'm interested in knowing what it would taste like with other chilies as well. Like, I wonder what it would taste like with like Skyline Chili or Gold Star. I can't even imagine, but I spread that out. And then I also shredded a block of some sharp cheddar cheese and just simply sprinkling that over the top. Um, how much you add is your preference. I just did enough to cover it. And I'm gonna throw that in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes until it's nice and bubbly and that cheese is melted. It smells so good. I served it with some Frito scoops and and I decided to just serve it like family style. And then back over to the ham barbecue sandwich. I did switch that to a saucer plate and I just threw a few pickles on the side, which went really, really well with it. And we love this dip. I knew we would. It's definitely a crowd pleaser and it was just a fun night. We had a movie with it and yeah, it was just a really good night. Lastly, we're going to have some cheese ravioli. We have not had ravioli in a while. It's been sounding good, and I had a coupon on this refrigerated version, so why not? I also have a ravioli sauce recipe that I've been wanting to try for a while. It has really high ratings, so we're going to give it a try. To a large skillet, I have melted down three tablespoons of butter. I minced up a few cloves of garlic, tossed it in along with two tablespoons of some all-purpose flour. I'm I'm stirring that really good to make sure the flour doesn't clump up and I let that cook out for a few minutes before adding a tablespoon of some tomato paste. I've also measured out a few spices so we have a half a teaspoon of some onion powder, dried mustard, basil, and some oregano. So I'm going to let that cook for a couple of minutes and I also measured out three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. So I'm just adding that in in small splashes while I am continuously stirring. I have learned over the years with sauces like this that go really quick 
quick to always like pre-measure out everything beforehand. It will make everything go so much smoother. I'm also going to add in one and a half cups of some half and half. I did switch on over to a silicone whisk. I really like using that with sauces to make sure that it's nice and smooth. As soon as that started to simmer, it started to instantly thicken. So I'm going to go ahead and add in about three tablespoons of some room temperature cream cheese. I'm also going to add in a can of drained Rotel. I had this original no salt added version in my pantry. I wanted to get rid of it. We did not like that. I think I got it because I had like a coupon on it. I got it for super cheap, so I grabbed it, but never again. Like we like the mild version and we like the salt. Um, I also added in about a third cup of some shredded Parmesan cheese that I shredded myself and just a small pinch of some red pepper flakes. And as soon as that Parmesan cheese is melted, the sauce is done. I'm gonna add in that cooked ravioli. Um, since it's fresh, it only takes a few minutes to cook up. And same thing, I'm just using a spatula to carefully just fold everything together. That way I'm not completely breaking up the ravioli or anything like that. I really like the sauce ratio. I always like when pastas are on the saucier side, so it definitely had that going on. I think it looks really nice. It's a nice meatless option, and I served it with some fresh corn on the cob. I'm so happy that corn is in season now. I added some better salt and pepper, and it was perfect. And I also served it with some garlic Texas toast. We like this ravioli. It was good, but it honestly wasn't a favorite. And I honestly think it had a lot to do with that Rotel that I used. If I used the mild version that we liked, it would have been a lot better. So don't not try it because of what I'm saying. It obviously is very popular, but that's all I got for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have the best weekend and I will see y'all in my next one.